Yeah, we're going to move on to the next proposition. Proposition 22, who is? Uh, that's me, Henry, and Britt. Um, All right, let's get it. Uh, I don't, I can't, do I need, should I share my screen? 22. Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, let me make sure I got the right one. Okay. Uh, can y'all see, can y'all see it? Prop 22? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Prop 22, just some background info. This was uh, brought up by Do DoorDash, Lyft, and Uber, which they put like multi-million, like $30 million each uh, to fund this. Um, and basically it's to sort of, or oh, actually I should start here actually. What does it do? So uh, basically these companies put this money together to bring this prop up and this prop would, so make this make, this prop would make ride share or ride share drivers um, labeled as independent contractors. They're currently labeled as employees of their company based on this uh, AB five. Um, or I think it's called uh, Assembly Bill five, which basically um, puts them under that category and puts them under um, what independent contractors are or no? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, in order to be in AB five, you need to have these three things. To, to be qualified as such. Um, but basically, again, this bill, if voted yes, would make the, or I should start here, sorry, I'm moving around a lot, I apologize. But basically, uh, if you vote yes, it would mean that these uh, rideshare drivers will be considered independent contractors instead of employees, All right? And so Henry, um, Britt and I were making arguments for it. Um, and I'll, I think Henry had more info on this first one. So I'm gonna let him take this first one. Okay, I, I guess Henry's not there. Um, but the first argument that we had was provides drivers these benefits and earnings guaranteed. So um, by letting them be independent contractors, um, they can have a better flexible schedule. A lot, of, like more than 80% of the drivers work less than 20 hour weeks, meaning a lot of them use it as like a, a side job in some ways. Um, and so they have other jobs and responsibilities and having a set work shift uh, makes it really difficult for them um, because uh, if they are labeled as employees, they need to have set work schedules and set work hours. Um, and so, and having that would make it really difficult for um, Uber or all these rideshare drivers to do that. Um, 2019. Wait, hold on. Can y'all see my screen? Yeah. You can? Okay, okay. I for think, some yeah. reason, it's yep. telling me that it's paused. And I just wanted to uh -huh. make sure. Oh, stop pausing it, dude. Uh, I didn't pause it though. Okay. Are you, are you on slide 24, overview of Prop 22? Uh, no, I am not. So hold on. Uh, hmm. Give me a second. Can y'all see? I was on, are talking about argument number one, prop slide number 29. Oh, mm. there, 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 there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, okay, okay. You should be able to see it now, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, the second argument was, oh, so if you vote no, this would, this would mean that the rides for the riders would be more expensive because companies would have to charge uh, more to cover the benefits for these employees. Um, and because these, these, the cost would go up, that means that they would not be able to have more full-time drivers available, meaning that they wouldn't be able to, to provide for as many rides as they do now in the areas that they have. Uh, and I'll leave it for Britt. I think Britt has, was tapping up the third one. Yeah, I could do the third one. So if you're in favor of Prop 22, um, basically it will also bring new public safety precautions like background safety checks and mandatory driver safety courses, which apparently are not in place now. So that includes companies would create and implement policies for anti-discrimination and sexual harassment. So that's good because, as I said, um, as far as we know, um, companies like Uber and Lyft don't have that in place. Um, it would also criminalize false impersonate, oh my god, you know what I talk about. But basically, you can't impersonate uh, drivers, which would result in a misdemeanor if you do, which is also something that hasn't been in place. Um, includes zero tolerance policies for driving under the influ under the influence um and let's see yeah Hello? that's pretty much can you, can you guys hear me 
Mm -hmm. Hear you now. Oh. <laughs> so, sorry, I was frozen. Um, I think Bowden hit the points pretty well, but going back to argument number two, I think it's important to take into consideration that if riders, if rideshare companies were to take um, their drivers and classify them as employees and cover them with benefits as such, um, they would have to be charging the riders more in order to use their service. And that I think would result in people, less people using it because of the service would be so expensive. And then because less people would be using it, they would be hiring less drivers. And because of that, um, less drivers mean even less riders. Um, and so I think that bounces back and forth um, in a kind of chain reaction um, as to why voting in favor of Prop 22 is a good thing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that Rebuttal can share their screen. Or sorry, not Rebuttal, uh, against. Who's up? What we got? Are you, James? Take it away. Okay. My internet connection is unstable. Okay. Fantastic. Can you guys see that? Yes. Am I frozen still? We're good. No. You are not frozen. Okay. Um, so, uh, Prop 22 uh, arguments for against it. It was uh, myself, Sarah, and Carrie. Um, the, the previous group brought up pretty much the same points that we were talking about. Um, I don't know if you want to, if you can talk about it, Sarah, or you can just write it in chat or I can talk about it however you want to do this. Okay. Wait, did you read this? Um, let's see. So we're against it because, uh, like they said, it'll probably, well, it'll cause unemployment increase because companies would have to um, f fully employ them to a certain extent. And that costs a lot of money to fully employ someone because they, they pretty much by law require some type of benefit such as health care, dental care. And it was talking about like what? Um, life insurance or unexpected death insurance or something like that. Yeah, I have that in the Oh, yeah, and that's a big cost to a company. We are against it. Isn't that what it says? I think we're just kind of confused by your argument because it sounds a lot like, because Prop 22 gets rid of AB5, um, it's kind of counterintuitive in some ways. So that's why we're confused a little bit. Yeah, so. It gets, rid of, again, yeah. it gets rid of AB5 in a sense that they're trying to convert um, contractors to full-time employees, right? Yeah, so you guys are in favor of them no, becoming so we're, full-time employees. So we're against Prop 22 in a sense that we don't want them to turn into full-time employees. Yeah, that's what it says here. Um, well, let's, uh, let's finish out the, uh, the slides. Let's just finish it out. Oh. I vote no. Please make them employees. Uh, so I'll just move on to the next slide. I think this one's already been said enough. Yes. Uh, increase in price. So they talked about that too, because um, yeah, demand's gonna fall short, and or supply's gonna fall short while demand stays the same, and based off intro to economics, that's going to just increase the price no matter what we do. Um, Bowdoin's group touched up on it earlier. Uh, flexibility and schedule decreases, which is like, we're going yes for 85. <laughs> oh, we got to make, well, <laughs> anyways. Well, we can uh, we can run into the uh, discussions part. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, we pretty much said Is it really confusing? Um, yeah, yeah, right. I, feel, yeah I, th I feel like honestly, 
shooting from the hip here, I feel like Prop 22 is designed to be confusing. I feel like it was, as previously stated by the um, pro <coughs> Prop 22 people, it was it was put in place by, or it was proposed by, you know, Uber and Lyft, right? And so they want to get rid of, because what was put in place back in 2018 or 2019 was AB5, which right. reclassified yeah. workers uh, who are independent contractors as employees. But it right. ha we haven't really had a lot of time with that classification for it to sink in. So I feel like a lot of people still think that people who work for Lyft or whatever are still considered independent contractors. And um, maybe there might even be certain um, lawsuits in the courts that prevent the full implementation of AB5, which is lost. why it's even more confusing because Prop 22 gets rid of AB5, something that has not maybe been fully implemented, or at least if it has been implemented, it hasn't been implemented long enough for most people to understand what it means to have an independent contractor become an employee. So it's weird. But the AB5 only um, classifies them as an employee yes. if, they meet, if they don't meet the test, right? So, so technically they're still independent contractors because of the test, the ABC test. I think right now they are employees because yeah. uh, they don't meet the ABC test. For example, what is it? They don't, they don't set their own hours. They don't negotiate uh, pay. And the other one, I forgot what the other one was. Um, oh, okay. So if this fails, <laughs> Uber and Lyft are going to have to shell out a crap load of money. They're going to have to change their business model, how they yeah. organize their drivers. And they're trying to prevent that. So that's why they spent a lot of money, the most money in the history of California propositions, putting this on the ballot. Does anyone have any questions about what it would do? Um, if anybody confused still about what it does? Uh, this thing is so fucking oh, it's like part-time employees is that not a thing it's a thing but you still have minimal things you need to provide your even part-time employees and i guess long story short that just adds up to business costs for uber and lyft who uh by the way are uh losing you know they, they haven't turned a profit i don't think in the last 10 years or so but i thought like part-time employees you don't get benefits like health and all that um, I think that as a part-time employee, um, if you work a certain amount of hours per week, um, they are required by law, by California law at least, to provide you with a minimum amount of benefits. So s certainly the uh, Uber and Lyft don't want them to be classified as employees. Why does anybody want them to be classified as em employees? What is the, the four side? Well, okay, that's confusing. The against side for this wants AB5 to stay and they want Uber and Lyft to treat their workers better by providing like a minimum type of wage, um, you know, sick benefits and all these other, other benefits. Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> I mean, personally, I'm against Prop 22. Um, I'm against it because I think gig workers should be considered employees. I feel like if your service is so convenient and so cheap um, and you're taking your, your, well, I feel like if your business model depends upon labor not being considered like normal labor, like it's in this weird special category of being an independent contractor, if your entire business model depends upon a loophole, then I don't think it's a sound business model. I think there's exploitation in the works. But we also contribute to it by writing it. Yeah, and that's what makes it so pernicious. I and mean, it's like, I feel like Uber and Lyft, and this is like, I don't know, maybe a little bit conspiracy theory um, territory. Uh -huh. but the whole thing is to become the only game in town. And so after they make themselves the only option, then they will raise right, uh, prices. And that's, that's their whole thing. It's to just, that's why they don't care about profits necessarily. They just care about market capitalization, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Somebody want to respond to that? Yeah. Respond to me. So William's saying the, you know, the, the companies that have, you know, 
$100 billion in investments are exploiting these, uh, these drivers by, of course, they want to keep their costs down. Um, and of course, they have a business model. Of course, they're planning to become profitable sometime in the near future. Um, and so William's saying, hey, the, the drivers who are doing the labor, they should, um, they should get a little a, a higher cut of the, of the rides and the revenue. Um, and this is what the, uh, the state legislature and the, uh, the governor said as well. And so does anyone want to make the case that, um, you know, it would be really detrimental if the drivers were suddenly employees and Uber and Lyft had, had this cost on them? Um, well, I think that uh, companies, whenever like uh, a law is passed to raise uh, certain taxes, the ability to pay always falls on the consumers. So in the end, people who use Lyft or Uber is gonna be end up paying for um, the driver's um, uh, benefits and whatnot. And yeah, like, isn't I that agree. isn't that the whole thing that like you know remember taxis like we had taxis everywhere before, and like a long time ago, uh, taxis were pretty cheap, and then like labor unions start arguing for their benefits, and then like now if you take ta a taxi from uh, downtown San Francisco to like uh, Ocean Beach, it costs you like sixty fucking bucks. And that's kind of like where like Uber and Lyft came in saying that, hey, you only have to pay 20 bucks to like get across town, you know, like, no, just a thought. Yeah. How much do you guys think the, uh, that, what, that, that uh, financial argument comes into account? Because of course we know we're not paying the, the correct cost for these Uber and Lyft rides. You know, they're not making any money off of our, off of our, you know, $5 rides. Um, does it, do people think that if they suddenly do become employees, then Uber and Lyft will be suddenly way more in the red and they might even, as they say, they might pull out of California and just not operate. Um, does anyone believe that that's going to happen? Lyft is already threatening to pull out of California if this, um, passes. Yeah, or I think it's, they I think stay it's as very important. apparent that it will pass. I mean, not pass, but I think it's very apparent that they will pull out. Um, I mean, a few things. If they do become employees, uh, one, you know, the thing that both groups touched upon is that the demand cycle will just spiral down out of control. Not only will these people not be making the money that they are now, a lot of them will be <laughs> fired because Uber and Lyft simply can't pay them the, the amount that they are because no one's using their service. Um, not only that, it will drive unemployment for the, the corporate side of Uber and Lyft. Um, for cities that depend on Uber and Lyft as their main source of traveling, I feel like most people have cars there. Like, for example, LA, um, Uber and Lyft is maybe a luxury in San Francisco because our MTA is pretty decent. So I think if they were to turn everyone that works for them. Oh, one more thing. Um, I think someone on their slide mentioned that most, not most, but like a good portion of the workers that work for Uber and Lyft are doing it for side gigs. They work 20 hours or less. So if they were to have mandated hours, it would kind of really turn their life schedule around. It would just kind of flip it upside down. So I think if everyone turned into a full-time employee, it would, it would hurt the majority of the drivers more than if they stayed as independent contractors. Does anyone know which way they're voting on this and why? Besides Will? Wait. I can't decide if I want less Uber drivers out there. Uh -huh. If so, they'll stop <laughs> double parking in front of where I need to go. Is that exactly what I guess? But it's, this is also for Postmates and DoorDash, not only Uber drivers and Lyft. True. I mean, so I feel like that service, if you want to use a service that is dependent upon labor exploitation, you know, I'm, I'd rather have a service that is slightly more expensive. And then I can know that nobody's getting exploited, you know? And yeah. But this and service honestly, probably won't even if they be around. To move, I feel like other states will follow our lead. Most of the times, whenever we pass like some revolutionary proposition or law, other states follow California's lead on this type of stuff. 
I don't know. It's hard to see Lyft pulling out because they're they're giving up such a huge market to Uber. Uber is not going to yeah, be. Yeah, that's Lyft. another. It's like California is the sixth largest economy, like what in the world, isn't it? Yeah. Or is that world. in the United? Yeah, it's the sixth largest economy in the world. I feel like they're not. I feel like that's a bluff. You know, they're making the choice between giving workers what they deserve versus not having the service at all. Can I play but, I don't know. advocate and ask the question of like, well, you're, you're saying like exploitation of workers, but isn't it the choice of those people to work for Uber or Lyft? Yeah, and that work should include what other jobs include, which is like healthcare or like a minimum amount of pay, because I don't know, I've been a DoorDash delivery driver and there have been days where you go on to the app and then there's nobody around to service because there are too many people who are servicing the app. And it's supposed to be self-regulating or whatnot, but they're constantly signing up new drivers. There's constant turnover, constant turnover because it's so convenient or because it's not a good option for some people and people only realize that after the fact. I don't know, I feel like a waste of time for some people it just yeah and you had something to say I'm... uh huh Sabrina has something to say <sighs> Anna's not talking at all I don't know I don't know whenever I'm muted or not mute because I dialed <laughs> in and then oh, okay. I can hear you am I muted am I muted oh. okay Anna then Sabrina okay. what's um, up <laughs> Sabrina, you go first. Oh, wait, no, I, I was just doing a mic check. You can go ahead. Sabrina, please. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll go first then. I do, I do agree with William in that they're kind of exploiting their workers, because especially with this law, because they're making them pick between, hey, do you want to keep your job or do you want these health benefits? I don't know if that's really exploiting, but it's making them do this ultimatum, which I don't think is really fair. But, you know, I'm really caught on the fence with this because I do agree with Carmen. It's like, well, isn't it your choice then, whether you want to or not? And there's another point. Oh, going back to about like, can Uber and Lyft be in the red or like deeper in the red, quote unquote, to um, what, if they were to pull out from California? I think I read somewhere that Texas actually kicked out Uber and Lyft. And there have been new companies that have been um, hiring drivers as real employees and giving them health benefits. And it's working because Uber and Lyft are out of the picture. So people are using this new ride share and it's working. So I don't know if that will impact California or how long it's gonna take for a company like that to employ these potentially unemployed drivers should this bill be passed or not passed. Like, I'm so confused about the yes and no, but I don't. When it yeah. comes to like the choice thing, where it's like, oh, the employees they they chose to this type this line of work, they had they had to have known what was involved. I feel like that's the problem. The choice to work for Uber or Lyft is so easy to make. The barrier for entry is so low as it stands right now, because uh, Uber and Lyft don't have to like vet whoever uh, there. Like, there's no money on the line, right? Like if you're some random dipshit off the street who has a sedan and time to kill, you know, Uber will take you. They'll take you and they'll be like, you know, it's up to you to to work the grindstone and whatnot. But if if they're required to pay them a decent wage, I feel like Uber and Lyft will be more discerning in who they hire and that will have positive knock-on effects where the person who is getting the service, the customer, will have a better service overall that I guess it'll be more expensive, but I mean, that's the actual cost of the service. That's the true cost of the service, you know? Uh, I, I think, um, people choose to work for Uber and Lyft because it's easy to get a job with them, right? And it's just easy to work for them. And I think they take advantage of those workers that can necessarily find a job somewhere else, right? And like they take advantage that they're just so easy to use and they're just doing the grunt work and making the money for like the corporation, right? Um, I think they deserve some 
protection or like benefits. And so I'm actually not sure like what to vote on this. Is that a voting for a no then? Um, I'm not sure yeah. either. I really do think that um, after reading a little bit about this prop that it's really two groups, right? right? Like the supporters and the opposition and they don't want to negotiate on their terms at all. Um, Uber on one hand, they really want to hold on to the money and they don't want to dish out the money for the benefits that they would have to put into their drivers if they were considered employees. But um, the argument is that they will lose their schedule flexibility if they were considered employees. Um, I think that like it wouldn't be a problem if Uber, you know, if they, if they considered their drivers employees, it wouldn't be a problem if the drivers could set their schedule ahead of time and still be considered employees. You know what I mean? Like they can still have, they can still work Uber as a side gig, but just with a schedule that's set ahead of time that works for them and still be considered employees. Sabrina Chu. I pass. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Um, so, oh, oh, what's my question? Yeah, what's the question? I just forgot it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Well, I just want to like about the scheduling thing. Right now, it's like as a driver, you get paid based on the work that you do, not the hours that you work, which right. is completely different from every other job ever. Um, and maybe every other job ever is wrong. I don't know. Maybe we should be paid based on how many widgets we produce. But I mean, is it so different from being a contractor where you're paid per project or something like that? It's not legally different. I feel like there are a lot of independent contractors out there who are not Uber and Lyft drivers who like work in the tech industry and do a little consulting here, a little this, a little that. But they're typically people who are specialized and they know what they're doing. And people seek them out for their specialized skills. An yeah. Uber driver is just a person with a car and a driver's license. Right, like you have to take into account the, like, the, the issue is like deliverables, right? And I think uh, this is more of a, this is like a greater question uh, that touches a little bit in automation, I think as well, because you, yeah, you could be like a, a freelance designer, like, and then you, you part of your deliverables is a logo or whatever and, and you can quote your client for those deliverables, however fast or slow that takes you, you know? Uh, but, you know, some people work by the hour and that may mean like that William said, you know, like if you're working at a fast food restaurant, there might not be any customers in an hour, but you still get paid for your presence there, right? Uh, regardless of, of the, the output of the work. And so, because people, because they're right now technically independent contractors, they, they're they charging for their deliverable, which is, you know, bringing people around. But if you, if, if that's like your sole source of income and you're sitting in your car waiting for people to come around and nothing happens, then uh, some would say that's on you, but like if you're working for a corporation that's enabling the service, then it is kind of like also on them maybe. I Yeah, I feel like that's a good distinction to make on the deliverable. Is it a like specialized high skill deliverable or is it a low skill deliverable like flipping burgers? Like, um, although flipping burgers can be high skill, but like, I think there's a distinction between those two and a, the current system of like working per hour works well for working in a factory or doing something where there's, it's a little established or like it's a low skill deliverable, but a high skill deliverable or like producing a logo is more based on people will seek you out for that particular service. I don't think anybody's seeking out individual people for driving for Uber. Right. No, like, there are no like sponsored Uber, like I don't know, like there are no celebrity Uber drivers, you know, like that's not a thing. You could be the first man. I've seen <laughs> Kevin Hart on Lyft. In yeah, the video. if Kevin Hart delivered your burger, that would be, but then hey, Kevin Hart would be making all the money, not the <laughs> little guy. Yeah, so so on that point, it seems like if you, if you feel like the labor is, you know, more like a menial job and it clearly doesn't have the same negotiating power as independent contractors like, you know, consultants or what have you, 
And you think that the uh, big companies are taking advantage of just the drivers, then you would lean toward trying to get Uber and Lyft to, you know, reflect that relationship better in employee and employee slash employer relationship. Yeah. It's all about negotiating power and somebody who's typ typical independent contractors who are like doing specialized work, their negotiating power is that their deliver their deliverable, be it like specialized electrical services or whatever, their deliverable is highly sought after and nobody else can do it or it's very hard to find somebody who can do it. But the negotiating power for your average Lyft driver is very low. They're just some random guy or some random girl. It's like, what? So I don't know. I feel like classifying them as employees would give them more of an ability to negotiate they'll be, for better they'll wages. They'll be taken also. care of a little better. Yeah. Um, but don't yeah. forget, uh, what is this, Prop 22, it does, it does entail some improvement in their conditions, right? It's just that it's what the Uber and Lyft decided it should be, which is, you know, a little increased earnings, some, some benefits. I don't know. I don't have the detailed list. So it does improve the condition a little bit and, you know, it's up to you to determine whether that is good enough for you or they should just be full-fledged employees. Um, you might have a problem with the fact that corporations are writing the law for us. You know what I mean? You might have a problem with that. You might think that um, there's also a, a provision here, by the way, that like this Prop 22, it can't be overturned unless it has like some huge majority of the legislature. Um, so it's just something that the uh, Uber and Lyft put in there just to kind of secure it if it does pass that it, you know, that wouldn't change for the near future. Um, we are running short on time on this one, guys. I'm, I'm still undecided. This one's, this one's not really easy for me. Uh, closing thoughts on this. Anybody, anybody. Uh, vote. Uh, vote, vote, right. vote. I think I'm going to vote no as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm right question. Like reading it for a little while, I think it, it was really just the rideshare companies trying to save themselves money and trying to benefit themselves. Otherwise, I don't think they would be putting out so much money on this campaign. Okay, James, what's your question? So, uh, are we looking to make people that use this as a side gig to be full-time employees? Doesn't that uh, take away from the fact that they want to use this as like a stepping stone to make a little bit of money to propel them? They can still be part-time employees, can't they? Yeah. 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 Is it? I just think an employee is full-time employee because it's not distinct, but well, if it's part-time, I guess it's okay then. It's just that it, if they don't need all these benefits because is it every part-time employee in California gets benefits? I don't know. Some kind they, of get, they get a certain amount of benefits. Well, they get like um, health care, dental care. Right, right. If they work a certain amount of hours, low. I think they qualify. You just gotta like work a certain number of hours to like right. earn them. Yeah. See, but thirty hours is a lot. I think thirty hours is a lot of time. Then if that's I think that's it's thirty hours, four to five day. hours. I mean, a four to five day work schedule compared to a part timer, which is twenty, usually twenty hours, right? Twenty eight hours if you want to go a little higher. I'm I'm not sure, but I think it's thirty hours split into two weeks. We are going to well, we... rush through the next proposition, folks. Uh... I was just curious. We can talk about this after. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we got to run through this. Uh, Prop, Prop B. B. 